Hey guys, welcome to Marche's Mirror. I'm Marche, and in today's video, I have a guest. Hey. Oh, <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> Ugh, you blew me. I'm over it. I'm <laughs> so next up, <laughs> the category is. <laughs> So where my mom where dinners were cooked. Yes, my mom, your mom, our mom. <laughs> mom. Oh, <okay>. mom. <laughs> no. <laughs> but like <laughs> Two, three, fuck it. Marche's Mirror. I'm Marche, and in today's video, you can see I have a guest. Hey, I'm Demetria from Find Your Fly and her older sister. I was about to say, if you don't follow me on Instagram, which you should be, follow both on Instagram. Like right now. <laughs> Pause the video. <laughs> Do it now. This is my older sister, and if you saw on Instagram, we asked um, in our stories to drop some relationship, dating, single, married questions. We're filming a Q&A because your girl is two years single as a Pringle. And I've been married since I was like two years old. <laughs> so she's been married for a long time and I have not. Let's go. So the first question we have is, how do you distinguish when a boundary should be set rather than the need to compromise? So I'm gonna let my sister take this one first because I actually suck at boundaries. <laughs> And that's something I'm working on and then I'll chime in. <laughs> that's a really good question. Um, I think it is super important for um, couples to discuss uh, values and boundaries yeah. um, constantly. Um, I think it's not a one and done type of situation. Yeah. I feel like it's something that you do um, to your, remind yourself, like, okay, this is important. Um, this is how um, I, I need for you to show up so that I feel whole. Um, so I would say if you're just starting to date, like, sit down, have the tough conversation. Um, if you are in a serious relationship or married, like, pick a date once a month. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> I think, too, if you're single and you're dating, you need to kind of, like, sit with yourself and figure out what is important to you. And when I say important... In the sense of like what things is a non-negotiable and yes. what things are bendable mm -hmm. and what things you don't have an opinion on at all so like if you're someone who's super passionate and lucky enough to be in your career already and you're dating someone who moves around all the time you would be like mm, you know that's, that's not work. something yeah. i'm willing to do because i'm here I'm, mm -hmm. I'm situated that would be a boundary like i'm drawing the line right here right a compromise is like oh, okay well we're both not totally existing on either side mm -hmm. so we can like move around so yeah i think that conversations need to be had because what you don't want is for something to arise that y'all never <laughs> talked about and you and then lay like... a boundary and they expect you to come from <laughs> like <"Woo." laughs> everybody's like Woo. war zone how do you find it in your heart to forgive your partner when they've betrayed you Ooh. It's a heavy one. Look, <laughs> you gotta forgive him. So I'm just kidding. So I, I don't. I mean, I think forgiveness is for you, right? Not for them. I think you have to come to a, a space where you are ready to like let it go and move on. Um, I <laughs> um, it's the word betrayed for me because I think. Everyone's capable of hurting you. Mm -hmm. That's different. Like you said, forgiveness is more so for you. And the word betrayed is what's sticking me because I feel like that's such, that's so high. Like mm -hmm. betrayal is like you've cut me to my core. You have done something that I didn't even think was in your character. Right. Like, and so I think you have to, again, sit with yourself and think, is this something when I tell them I forgive them? That I'm not, the next time they hurt me, I'm not going to be like, well, you did this, da, 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 because then you never forgave them one. And they're always going to feel like I'm that one mistake. But is it forgiveness or the ability to forget? So 
I don't know about the whole forgiveness. <laughs> you know, that's, I don't know who made that up. Right. Um, I've been scorned. I've been betrayed. And I'm not right. going to say I'm, I'm going to ever I mean, forget. I was going to say, do you ever forget? I think you like... should forget. But I think remembering and like throwing it in someone's face is two different things. So I think you have to figure out for yourself like where that lies on the scale for you. Yes. And then too, notice if your partner is changing. So if they're actively making choices that affirm that they are the person you need to be with or that or they are listening whatever, yeah, or working issue. on whatever the betrayal was, let that matter. Like, you know, this happened yeah. a year ago and that's they're totally not the same person. Like maybe creating a space where you can just talk about that you are not over it. Because I'm not okay. saying it's impossible by any means. I think if that's who you're supposed to be with depending on the t it takes a lot of effort from both people but i definitely think it is doable how do you solve conflict worked out work out agreements especially when it becomes passive aggressive wow how do you handle conflict um i think you need to just jump right in like flag that there is a problem flag on the play something went wrong <laughs> and talk about it um i think one of the things that i have learned from my husband in the 20 years that we've been married is that you have to like square up and like deal with it right <laughs> like you can't just right you gotta like face it own it like this is a problem if that means like sitting up all night and like talking about it until we're both okay like we have to do that right <laughs> roll off my back right it's, i'm done but like you know i think you have to like be willing to say okay this is something that is bothering one of us so we have to commit to like talking about yeah. it until we're on the other side and that's exhausting that's <laughs> nobody that's, said it would be easy yeah and so i think if you are wondering how you deal with conflict just jump right in and figure it out together good point i definitely don't think you should uh let it sit mm -mm. Cause I think how you, I don't think how you handle conflict necessarily changes the minute you get married. So if you are um, coming from someone who is naturally passive aggressive, it does the relationship and assuming the marriage no service if you just sitting there fuming on the inside. People are not mm -hmm. mind readers. That's the biggest mistake people yes. make in dating and relationships, right. platonic relationships. People cannot read your mind, right. and you because. can't expect you from. Say what you feel. You can't expect you <laughs> from other people. So just because it made yeah. you mad, Doesn't someone mean else could literally be okay, and let it roll off their back, and you're yes. sitting over there a week later, like, mm, right. and they're like, yeah. they don't forget what happened. So talk about yes. it if in the moment it, or like the next something. day. Uh, when when was the hardest part of marriage? The beginning, the middle, or the end? Uh, um, that sounds dark. <laughs> Getting the middle or like I mean, 15 I think, years plus. I think um, I would be lying to myself if I said that like challenges have an expiration date. <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, I think, you know, we all have um, a different threshold for what like tough means or like struggling. Um... And so over the years, we've definitely had like some pain points, some low times, but I think how we have learned to deal with them has changed as mm. we've grown, as yeah. we've matured. Um, we first got married, Jermaine was involved in like two very serious motorcycle accidents, right? Where it's like, ah! you know, we thought... <laughs> I just got a husband right. right. or like we thought he was gonna be like out of here um and so just like learning to support somebody who like is depending on you to like bring them food to like help them get around like that can be draining right so know that you will forever experience challenges but like as you grow I think the joy comes in learning how to like deal with them yeah um, so like if you were to experience god that's, willing like the same, right, that same type of now negative negativity is like yeah. okay our first year of marriage just like rocked us but it's mm -hmm. like in year 10 right we're a whole just, different right. couple it's yeah, like we can yeah we, i've noticed my married friends uh -huh. that they treat their husband's friends better than their female single friends why is this natural to feel like there is a change right because your friend 
has someone that in some ways is like taking up the space maybe that you used to hold, right? And so that feels different. It looks different. I think you have to like have conversations like, okay, as a couple, we're going to do this, but I'm still going to like hold space for you in this way. Um, when we first got married, we hung around a lot of married couples, right? It's like, mm -hmm. you know our experience, like we can talk about the same things. And so bringing into like bringing a single friend into that they probably would feel like i don't understand to make that friend you know feel like they still have some like connection with you even though it's different and so i yeah. think it is natural to feel like oh you don't have a space for any, me anymore i don't think you should think of it like um your married friend is treating their new friends better I think too, yes. it's like an adjustment on everyone's part, right? Mm -hmm. So I have like two friends now that are married women and that shift in a sense of like, they're not always going to be as accessible to mm -hmm. me like they were in college, understanding mm -hmm. that they're now someone's wife, like that right. comes with a lot of other things that mm -hmm. I might not realize or that or I might not like understand, and understand right? or yeah. acknowledge because I'm not in that situation. Yeah. I just think it takes effort. And again, going back to like the conflict question. It have these a lot of this advice can be taken in like platonic relationships too right. because you might have to like give her grace, you know, like okay, she's mm -hmm. married, I'm gonna give you know, let her figure that out, but then it'd be like, hey. But now I think it's also on that on your the person who asked the question, their friend, like there's a whole other person that they have to consider that they didn't have to consider <laughs> before. Right? So it's like I can't pour into you the same way because like I'm like a whole nother of a yes. partner now who I have to into. <laughs> right. And so that's why I said, you know, sitting down with that friend to say like, hey, this is how I'm feeling. I'm feeling like I'm left out. Um, but like, let's create a new space. Let's create a new experience where I don't feel like I'm on the outside. Right. Yeah. Maybe it's like we spend time every three weeks together. Right. And like that's That's our... adult friendship, y'all. You got to schedule time. <laughs> Sounds like, oh, that's too much. But it's like. We don't live, like I would give anything to go back to college where me and all my best friends live in the same state, right. mm -hmm. 10 minutes from each other, you could yeah. pop up. It's not like that anymore. We're spread out. Mm -hmm. We have to make travel arrangements sometimes. It takes effort um. to show up. <laughs> so I think yeah. um, just making sure like that you have that communication. Like, <laughs> how do you still maintain your interest and make time for your husband? So I'm assuming they're asking how do you make sure like you maintain you? Right. And still make time for your husband. I mean, I think it's important to just, you know, when you have that boundary conversation, when you have talk about like what you value, right? I think it's important to bring those things up. Like, like priorities. Right. Like, you can't I, fall last on the list, y'all. I'm sorry. <laughs> you know, or like, you know, I value going to the spa. So, like, that's my time to like pour into myself. And he knows that, right? Like, or, you know, I value traveling. He knows that. That's something we can do together and we can do, like, apart, right? Like, yeah. he has, like, his bike trips that he takes with his friends. I travel with you <laughs> and, <laughs> and Monica. And so I think, you know, just talking about the things that, you know, make you feel whole and, like, how does that work now in this yeah. relationship, I think is how I do it. Um and making sure that there's always like a connection, right? That no one person feels like I'm over here just watching you live your best life. Yeah. I think <laughs> but, maybe that's um, a lot of like younger people get married. And I say younger, I mean like my age group, like we're pre 30. Let's put it that way. If you get married pre 30, mm -hmm. you're still kind of figuring out. A, we act like we have a lot of stuff figured out, but we still <laughs> fumbling around. We're still figuring out. And I think sometimes we feel like I can't to live my own life means I got to neglect somebody right. else or right. I got to mm -hmm. be all in my relationship and then neglect everything right. else. And you don't. Really it literally do. just comes down to balance. And it's yes. like and talking about and it. talking like mm -hmm. if your husband prioritizes dinners, I'm not saying to have your life means you like leave him high and dry knowing right. he can't, he's, he not can't gonna eat. he's not going to eat like it sounds so simple, but that is something that. I definitely struggled when we first got married. It's like, oh, you know, I'd be coming home late because, you know, I was in school or had rehearsal or whatever. And Jermaine's like, oh, what are we going to eat? I'm like, oh, what are we going to eat? I ate. 
<laughs> this one is how do you discuss finances? <laughs> people are talking about money. <laughs> people do, but I'm not one of those people. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I think you people. just have to like again jump right in and like talk about it like are you one of those people who like you don't mind if you skip you know a monthly payment versus like me like I want to pay things on time like you know <laughs> I'm looking at you <laughs> okay so since they said how I'm thinking like, okay, how I would want, I, I'm not the money girl, okay? I'm not the financial <laughs> expert. What I'm looking for in a partner and a potential husband is someone who I can trust that much <laughs> to handle <laughs> All the finances the because that's <laughs> not a strong suit of mine. I'm not right. going to pretend like it is. Like, we, I couldn't be with someone who struggled in that just as much. Right. We would end up homeless. Okay. <laughs> no, but yeah. But I, I don't, if someone brings up money to me, I don't want it to feel like a judgment. Okay. So I think bringing it up like a discussion and like a com an equal better. conversation would make yes. me feel better as opposed to like, what are you, you know, like pointing finger type of thing or like right. guns out. <laughs> but, I mean, I think um, until you establish like who you are financially, right? Like maybe Which you should be done before you. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> maybe you don't know how to like start the conversation. Um, and so it's going to probably feel very wonky in the beginning, but like just dive in. <laughs> and then keys to a successful marriage. Maybe like a top three, top five. Wow, communication, um, I think one. is number one. I think the other thing is learning how to honor the other person. Like whatever that looks like. Whatever that looks like um, would be my strong number two. Like. That is something that I definitely have to like, or had to like, learn over the years because I like to say that I'm very self-full. So, <laughs> not selfish, self-full. Um, and so just like honoring another person's voice, honoring like the things that bring them joy, honoring like who they are, how they show up. Um, it's something that, you know, you got to keep working on so that they feel like, they matter admitting when there is like foul on the play or like admitting that you're wrong about something right like, like you were messed up yes yeah. like my bad i'm sorry however you want to say I'm it sorry. but like yeah just showing you know compassion empathy like all of that for someone else's like feelings i think even if it doesn't make sense to you well, I think you don't stop talking until it makes sense to you. You don't stop talking until it makes sense to you. First question, how are you dating during quarantine? <laughs> we is not. So, I don't want to say I've been like dating quarantine wise, mm -hmm. but I've FaceTime, mm -hmm. um, games. I've been into, I've quarantine reinvigorated yes. my love for games oh, God. and yes, so <laughs> you know a friend of mine enjoys playing games too so we've done we've done that mm, quarantine has made me realize that we need to get back to dating like we used to have like a date night mm. and we'd go out and do stuff on that night and then you know life happens i think a lot of couples could probably yeah so we just need to like get back to date night i, I have not know. gone on an in-person date you during have quarantine uh -uh. what are you first attracted to looks or smarts so when it says first attracted to obviously that's going to be looks because that's all you can see yeah mm -hmm. i think that sounds i'm not shallow <laughs> Yeah, looks, but I, I think, think looks, but as soon as they open their mouth to me, right. that's where smarts happen. So, like, you yeah. could blow me and completely turn me off the first thing you say to me. Mm -hmm. And now, I'm if I, if it's irritating or, like, I feel offended. Right. Where looks get done. you into the door. And then what you say out your mouth is, am I yes. shutting the door in your face or am I <laughs> inviting, inviting you in? in. <laughs> um, how do you deal with sarcastic or passive-aggressive men? So, I'm sarcastic, so mm -hmm. I'm going to dish it back. Now, mm -hmm. passive aggressive men, I don't find that a quality, I don't find that attractive in someone that I'm looking to date. 
because I'm passive. <laughs> so if I'm passive and you passive, we we're just... not ever going to get anything. The point for me, I've realized now mm -hmm. in my this new phase that I'm in of like singleness and intentional. Oh, in a new phase. Okay. <laughs> being intentional is you want a partner that helps you in certain areas. And I'm yes. not saying like. You add value. You I'm, value. Yes. I'm not saying I need to feel the holes you have in yourself mm -hmm. by all means you need to do your own work but like to your who work. you are at your core is who you are at your core so i know like i mentioned money not my strong suit right i need so someone who's who strong financial so. wise yeah. i'm naturally passive aggressive i'm working on it and i do know how to put myself out there or approach conflict but that, at my core that's who i am so i need you, you to be someone balance. that's like direct right. and balance you out yeah like balance you know so how would i deal with it i don't <laughs> That's the answer. But sarcasm, yeah. take it with a grain of salt. I'm not good with expressing my feelings or wants. How do you do that while dating so he doesn't waste your time? My advice is <laughs> don't date until you are. <laughs> until ready. you can express your feelings. Yes. Yeah, because Stay away. just do it when you're ready because mm -hmm. you are going to end up getting your time wasted. And I'm not going to say it's going to come from a malicious place because speaking from like a woman's vantage point, y'all, we be trying to expect men to read our minds and yeah. they cannot. So if you don't express how you feel, it is going to waste your time. And I think, you know, you just have to understand that the most important relationship you will ever be in is the one with yourself. <laughs> and so figure you out first before you go. Speak and up. I mean, you don't got to read them, but yeah. you could be simply say like, I'm not interested in mm -hmm. something casual. I want a relationship. Also, yeah. I'm an advocate for don't like don't ask questions or don't say anything you're not prepared to answer for. Mm -hmm. Because if you say I want a relationship and you are ex your expectation is so high that he's gonna say me too that if he says I don't want that you're you crushed rush. <laughs> and you like put yourself yeah. you put yourself up for that. Game over. Come in like I can, I'm I'm ready I'm ready to... for whatever. Wherever, Whatever wherever. he comes at, I'm ready for that. Or wherever she comes, I'm ready for that. Don't go in like, all right, I'm going to say the question and they're going to, don't, don't feel their part in. Mm. How has dating been since leaving a long-term relationship? So that's going to be a separate video. <laughs> Not this question, but like my backstory, my experience in a long-term mm -hmm. toxic relationship, my failed engagement. Yeah, if you didn't know, I was engaged for a year. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to put gave it give that its own video you know i'm ready i'm a, as jada would say i'm gonna bring myself to the red table okay? Girl, i don't have a red table <laughs> i don't have a red yeah. table but i'm pulling myself up to it okay, okay. so stay tuned for that yes. but dating says leaving a long-term relationship i will say at the beginning it was awkward because just like yeah, anything you get well i do think i think i made i was really intentional about making sure i wasn't still severely in my pain mm -hmm. so I did spend a good time alone and just sad I mean that's the reality I think people make it breakups even if you insinuate the breakup it still hurts right and I think like unpacking your own feelings just right sitting with yeah. yourself you just got a lot of things out, just yeah. categorizing that How first I end up here again yeah like, like just mm -hmm. deal with that and then I think just your brain reworking itself so like mm -hmm. I was someone's girlfriend for almost five years yeah. I know I was there. and it's like <laughs> sitting at a you know now you're dating you're single and it's you like it's kind of like okay look in the mirror like you know nice to meet you again it's been a while like the last introduce yourself yeah the last yourself. time the last time we was together I was mm -hmm. like teen right. 20 something now I'm a grown woman what's that look, look like in a mirror. Yeah, it was like awkward <laughs> just like getting back in there was awkward yeah. but once i got through the awkward phase i think it was fun i found out like and that was the feedback i got from my friends like dating can, dating is fun that's the part people it's supposed to be fun it's not mm -hmm. supposed to be stressful it's just like have a good time okay. and if it don't work it don't work, it don't work. Yeah. like just move on no hard feelings nothing so i would say it was awkward at first and then it got really fun I don't have any like awful date stories so I'm not gonna say because sometimes it can be like traumatizing like in the sense of like what yeah. is what is happening <laughs> I've come back and what, what is this 
I don't even really remember dating. Your question <laughs> Your question was the differences in dating other men versus dating your then boyfriend now husband. So like what was dating prior to Jermaine and then yeah. like how was it different dating him? I don't really remember <laughs> Was it just <laughs> oh, okay. I don't really remember dating. Wasn't dating any well I shouldn't say that. I was gonna say I wasn't dating anyone like really significant, but like <laughs> substance <laughs> no but I think I was still young right like trying to figure out who I was I was in college so I think it just you know it was what it was um but I think the difference um when I met Jermaine he was the most established person that I had ever dated right and right. so that stood out that was like a big difference like he had already like purchased a home like he was you know in a career right, that took me too right and so I was like age. hey <laughs> I see you <laughs> so that makes me think of when I forgot to dating us now post long-term relationship made me like see qualities in people more apparent yeah. like there's so many different types of people and like dating again is kind of like relearning what now like I said yeah I'm older so like what qualities don't I like mm -hmm. in someone what qualities do I like I want him to be have certain things about himself so like yeah if I met a guy with a house that would stand out for me like you want a house yeah. by yourself like right. and I think the okay. other thing like he was ready he was in a place to receive a partner which was different I think everybody else um prior to him it was just like we just kind of like just like doing a thing right an entanglement <laughs> You were in, I'm ready to be entangled. <laughs> right. And so when I met him, it was pretty clear that he was like, okay, I'm looking for a wife. Like, mm -hmm. I'm ready to, like, bring someone into my space. And so I think that uh, stood out. How long is too long to talk slash date before an official title? The next so. day. No. <laughs> <laughs> you are mad. How long <laughs> is too long? All right, so there's so I many think, layers to this. Yes, I was going to say, I think you guys have to establish. There got to be, like, time stopping. stamps. Yeah. You can't just, like, fumble. You cannot be in an entanglement for, like, <laughs> a year and some change and then say this is too long for him to not act with his girlfriend when, whole, like, whole time y'all weren't Right, but see, I think together. that goes back to something we mentioned earlier, like, in the video. You have to talk about, like, what you value, right? Like, you have to establish early on... Like I am look, I am dating to be married, or I am right. dating to, you know, figure this but out. But in today's day and age, people have a tendency to like stay in this. When people say like, "Oh, what are y'all doing? We're just having fun." Like you could have fun for over a year. Mm -mm, that's what we got to talk about. Yeah. yeah so you have to establish: Are we just having fun, or are we officially dating? Like, am I exclusive? Mm -hmm. Are we exclusively dating each other? Because then I think yeah, you gotta by a year, year and a half, actually, if you're exclusively dating someone, ex by the end of the first year, y'all should be official. And by official, I mean, like, this is my boyfriend, this is my girlfriend, that kind of thing. there are some thing. people who believe that it's, like, nothing until... You can still be nothing until you marry, but yeah. some people really value titles. Yeah. Like, I'm not just going to be having fun with you <laughs> for seven years. I, I think... You have to sit down when you meet someone and you're ready to take it to the next level. You have to check in to see if that's something they're ready to do right. before you move forward. So if it's like six months, you notice that y'all been like doing what you're doing for six months and you know you're feeling like I want him to be my boyfriend you need to, mm -hmm. or a girlfriend or whatever. You need to sit down and be like, let's just kind of, you know, like reevaluate what we're doing. Right. Yeah. And if they're still like, I'm still ready to have fun, then you got to do some, yeah. you got to do some evaluation. Mm-hmm. When is too early to have sex with a guy? I'm sorry that I'm laughing. I'm not sure. I promise. Okay. <laughs> I just find that is just. I still. It goes back to your own. Like, I just think that value system. That is, yeah, that's, that's just you. you. I there, can't tell you what to do with your cook. See, I can't tell you what to do with your kitty cat. Yeah, the first works for I'm, you too. If you want yeah. an answer, like the day you meet them. <laughs> I mean, I think if y'all meet at a party, don't get down in the bathroom that same day. It goes back to your value system. Like, Maybe that person is a free spirit and that's, they, they're both okay with that. 
Let me read the question. Oh, it says with a guy. Cause you, so you're not giving us that you like date or anything. Mm -hmm. If you want an answer, that's what I'm going to say. The day you meet them. That's too early. That's too early. You got it? Yeah. Too early. That's too early for me. I say let them wait. <laughs> <laughs> now to the single questions. Woo, woo, woo. Mm -mm. How do you woo, handle woo. it? How do you handle being bored while single? Have fun. Take a class. Yeah, work say, out. Expand. Hang out with your friends. Your travel. Yeah. Obviously not now, but like do now. something with yourself. Yeah, yeah, there's so many things to do. Don't sit and just focus on that one area like, oh, I, I'm single. Mm -hmm. You That means you should be having the time of your life. Right. <laughs> it's I can't say in the two years that I've ever been bored. Mm -hmm. I think, if anything, I've literally been having the time of my life. I think the first, the summer, last summer, if you follow me on Instagram, I like went to so many places. I traveled. I had the same, yes. had the same so plans. Like, sit down, sis. I had the same plans <laughs> this summer. But, but I didn't account for yes, the world to shut down. Like, I need you to sit down. I've us. taken, we've taken aerial class. We've mm -hmm. taken pole dancing. I've taken, I haven't taken a cooking class. And there's, trust we me. We did what, hot yoga too? Hot yoga. There's tons of things on my list of like, just random yeah. stuff. There's no way to be bored. Just get out there and do crazy things. Take yourself on dates. Ask your mm -hmm. friends to come with you. Tons of things. How did you bounce back? That's also going to be in the video that I'm going to record about all that all that all that all that's gonna be one video all that and dancing. but if i could say like sum it up how about you just that? do it okay because that's the expectation because i would not let her fall okay Get i was up. about to say that would be my number one thing <laughs> surround yourself with good people i had a great support system i didn't lose any close-knit friends mm -hmm. I felt like that affirmed the people i have in my inner circle they mm -hmm. were all still there and just ready like ready to give me what i needed whether that was space mm -hmm. whether that was like a shoulder to lean on affirming my decision was big so like yes. surround yourself with people that helps to bounce back heal 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 okay <laughs> you okay. cannot ignore the pain There's of healing. what you went through or the breakup so i would say those were the two big pieces to how i bounce back surrounded myself with good people and i took the time to actually heal which is uncomfortable but like yes, i said different video just do it just do it <laughs> what's the best part about being single i don't answer to anybody <laughs> well i think what i from the outside looking in i feel like you rediscovered yourself yeah i would probably right. say that was like a fit the official best part mm -hmm. i feel like i met Marche, yeah, who I like really wanted to be because mm -hmm. it's easy to get trapped in a relationship in that other voice, and cloud it's not always judgment. malicious, yeah. malicious, but cloud your judgment, or you don't, you're just not as willing to do spontaneous things. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, I cut all my hair off, <laughs> that yeah. was something I wanted to do for years, and so after I was just like, why not? So, I think, yeah, discovering myself, and that's been a blast. What advice would you give women who are struggling with embracing their singleness? Um, first unpack that. What about being single is so scary, scary for you? Yeah. Um, because that's going to give you a lot of the clarity you're looking for. Why mm -hmm. am I so uncomfortable being by myself? Right. Whether that's, you might realize, hey, I don't have solid people around me. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't have solid friends. I need to reevaluate that or, um... Just Maybe I've got some, yeah, stuff. I've got some stuff that I just haven't really unpacked. I've just kind of sucked it under the rug behind mm -hmm. the pillow. Do that. So my advice would be to like figure your stuff out. You know, at the end of the day, we're all just still trying to figure this out. Yes, we are. So if you are single, I wish you the best. I want you to have fun. If you are dating, I wish you the best. I hope you have fun. And if you happen to be married watching this, I hope that your marriage is and, great. Mm -hmm. And having fun. And having fun. Yeah. <laughs> Same things apply. <laughs> Make sure you like, subscribe, share, and comment that on this video. Send it to your friends. Discuss the video. How would you answer the questions? Mm -hmm. Comment down below any additional questions and answer some in the comments. I want to know what you guys think about some of the questions. Follow us on Instagram. And I'll see you in the next video. Wintour. Wintour out. <laughs>